Hello there, Sid here, welcome to the Drunken Orc. Now a little bit earlier this October, I did a video where I built a truck using a Panzer Toon tank, the front cab off the GW Cargo 8 Ridge Hauler, and some odds and ends I had lying around. Plastic card, bits of old kit, stuff like that. And in that video of a grey model, mostly a grey model, there was some white and stuff on it as well, I told you that I would do another video where I would paint it. Now, and I'm a git of me word, this is that video. So as usual, I'm going to take you through the painting stages, what I did to it, a few little odds and ends, and then we'll end up with some comparisons and a nice little montage -y. Let's get on with it. So here I've got all the pieces laid out, and in the last vid I'd primed them black, and in this first pick I've given them a coat of gunmetal with the old airbrush. Now we don't look particularly silver here, I think that's just a, an issue with the lighting, so apologies for that, but they're just basically a plain metallic. Not too bright, but just as a base. I then give every single piece a coat of GW contrast paint, this is Gilliam and Flesh, and if there's parts of it which are, you can still see are silver, like the sandbags and what have you, that's just because they're not going to be metallic. So there was no point slapping any of me metallic method onto that since I was going to paint over them anyway with something totally different. Once I'd got this contrast on, which is to give them a kind of grubby look, I then dry brushed them a couple of times. The first dry brush I applied to the metallics is a GW Mornfang Brown. I mean, to be honest with you, any chocolatey brown is absolutely fine. I do use the GW one though, out of preference, just because it's a bit thicker than the ones I've tried from Vallejo and what have you. And then once that's dry, I'll go over all the metallics again with GW's Riser Rust. But again, any bright orange will do here. It's just for the more dried on rust. Now at this point, everything looks like something horrific you might find in a baby's nappy, or diaper if you prefer. So to bring the metallics up a bit, I give it a quick once over with a metallic dry brush and generally I use a gun metal again. If you've got some flat panels like you have here on the track guards on the left, uh, I will just dry brush the, the flat panels just to add some texture to it. And that's basically the metallics done. Now all I need to do is go back, pick out anything that's not metallic and add little splashes of colour here and there. And any bits that quite frankly I can't be bothered to paint doesn't really matter. Here yeah, you can see I've done the sandbags on the flat back platform and also the one on the bonnet and I've also painted the wooden steps inside the truck and on the box back as well. The sandbags are just painted a uh, bone white style, creamy colour, give them a, an agrax wash and then dry brush them up again with a, a few lighter shades of the, the original bone white up to an off white. The wood bits, I went with a darker wood colour so a darker brown and then just dry brushed up with a few lighter shades. Because I used coffee stirrers, the wood grain is already done for you. Next one to picking out the colour. So here you can see I've done some red bits and some black bits. The red bits were just corn red with a red tone wash from Army Painter. And then I went and done a little bit of edge highlighting with Evil Sun Scarlet just to make it pop a little bit. The black panels were just painted matte black and then I've done the same with a grey as I did with the Evil Sun Scarlet on the red. I also picked a couple of panels out in white, these are generally going to have checks on them. I painted up the crew, nice and easy, more tension on the top half and the bottom half since you're not even going to see the bottom half and there's some of those checks I mentioned. I also started picking out the odd little panel in blue as well which is Vallejo blue green with a watered down blue contrast wash on top of it and then edge highlighted with the Vallejo blue green again mixed with a little bit of white. And here you can see the driver a little bit better and you can see I've done a few more checks as well on the front mud guard and on the bumper as well as picking out that hood ornament. Went on the truck box and picked out all the dags and plates and that in either the red or the blue with a couple on being done with checks and some of the textured patches just being left metallic. Done the same on the super shooter with some of the metallic bits being given a coat of different contrasts or speed paints, generally the browns because it gives you nice bronzes and brasses and that sort of look. It mixes up your metallics a bit and some of them are just painted gold with a dark ink wash. Not known oil, something a bit more thicker, a little bit more pigment and it just to really tamp the, the shiny gold down. The Grot Gun crew were painted and they were glued in place along with the super cannon itself onto that back flat platform. And that was pretty much the truck done. 
However, I did have a couple of track guards which were just flat pieces of armour and I wanted to jazz those up a bit. So on the left hand side one, I painted this amorphous black blob of paint covering most of the bottom half. This is going to be a mass of boys all charging forward. You can see a couple of pencil sketches I'd scribbled on with shooters and choppers being waved in the air and whatnot. Once the base black was dry, I started adding some wire flesh for the base of the orcs themselves and these were just a very simple sort of shape to represent the orc head, mostly jaw, a little bit of sloping forehead and a few little pointy ears and there's a few little arms on there as well. And then with a mix of wire flesh and warboss green I started highlighting these heads, the tops along the tops of where the jaws would be in the arms and then once that was done I just used a neat warboss green to do the highlights a little bit more. On some of the large ones I also picked out a few more highlights with a progressively lighter shade of green. I believe it was scar snake green mixed with a little bit of the war boss and then maybe a tiny bit of the scar snake on its own just for some highlights on the uppermost part. Once that was done I added some details basically picking out some eyes and teeth just so it looks like a vast mob of boys all charging forward and to finish it off I painted the wire above them and then just added some sluggers and choppers into those raised hands. Now for the right hand side I was going to do the same thing but I thought I might try and change it up a bit. So I sought some advice from the other five war bosses and none other than Dreadwire Gaming stepped forward and said why not do a stomper and I thought well if we've got the wire on the left hand side epitomising orcs need to crump and on the right hand side we'll do the other side of the orky coin and do dagger. So I painted a big fat stomper at the back and then a little stylized mob of boys run around its feet. And that's the right side track guard. The base shape of a stomper itself was painted in corn red and then I mixed a little bit of corn red with Evil Sun Scarlet just to basically paint the actual armor panels in the head just to make them separately. And then just using lighter shades of red just to do the uppermost parts. The skull and teeth were khaki. I then highlighted the skull with shanty bone bone white from Vallejo and then just plain white whereas the teeth I went with Avalon Sunset and Aerial Yellow. The weapons were just done the same way but with greys and the eyes with greens. Now all that's left to do is put it all together. So there it is from the left hand side with the truck box on the back. I'll be running this as a truck and then if I want to mix it up with a little bit more artillery style firepower I'll swap it out for the magnetised super cannon. It also looks pretty cool with the super cannon from the front as well. Now I was asked after the last video where I built this, how big is it compared to a standard orc truck? So to answer that, here yeah, you can see the two trucks facing each other, my latest one and my first one which is a standard orc truck and there's not much in it. I haven't got any of the magnetised back pieces on my truck here and you can run it like this, it's more like a big truck which it also is when it's got the super cannon on to be fair and I suppose you might be able to stretch it to a, a cannon wagon but you get a better idea of the comparisons when you see them both front on which again not much in it maybe my new one is a little bit bigger a little bit beefier but I did build the original truck stripped down I didn't put its front armour on or anything like that and from above you can see there's only about 15mm difference in the actual overall length not including rounds so that's it Drunken Orcs truck number 5 or big track number 1 finished. So thanks for watching, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, leave a comment and to see you out I'll give you a little montage of some nice glamour shots. Until next time, take care.